feeling okay. Shalom, shalom to everyone out there. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Let me fix this mic real quick. Hold on. All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, let's start off by giving all honor, thanks, praise, and glory to our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, and which is the Most High, and His Son Christ, and who this society foolishly and ignorantly calls Jesus. Secondly, much love and support to all of the brothers and sisters out there that's of this faith, no matter if you're part of a camp or not, no matter if you're new to this faith or not, no matter if you're new to this faith or not, as long as you continue to help push this biblical truth with all faith and sincerity to all of our people out there with eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand, preferably towards the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of a Negro descent. Once again, this is your brother Yahweh Yashara for the sea souls of Israel, the rocks of offense, and also the ambassadors for righteousness once again. Drop you another quick video. So brothers and sisters, what this video is going to be about is basically part two to another video that I've done before concerning this matter, which is fear not, keep your faith in the most high, right? So basically, this is what we're supposed to be doing nowadays, man, especially us brothers and sisters of this faith. We're supposed to be fearing not and keeping our faith in the most high, man, because of all of the craziness that's going on that we see on a daily basis, man. And that's the reason why I decided to do it. Okay, so in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 4, and it reads, Hear, O Yasharala, which is Israel, all right, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, and the descendants of the 12 tribes, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, right? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, which is the most high, our power is one power, man, right? Verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thine heart, which is all your mind, right? And with all thy soul, which is your body, and with all thy might, okay? With all your willingness, all right? So this is what we're supposed to be doing, man. We're supposed to be cleaving on to the most high power, which is the God of the Bible, the God of Israel during these perilous times, man, right? Let's read that again. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might, all right? Let's jump down to verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up, okay? So this is what we're supposed to be doing, man. No matter what's going on around us, all of this craziness that's going on around us, man, we're supposed to be keeping our minds fixated on the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments, and teaching them to our families, man, teaching them to our wives, teaching them to our children, all right? Our next door neighbors, if they're willing to hear, if they have an ear to hear, a mind to understand, and eyes to see, right? So this is what we're supposed to be doing, man. We're all we all supposed to stay fixated and keep in the most highest law, statutes, and commandments, man. All right? But as the scripture says, you know, charity starts at home first, right? So, of course, you got to teach them to your wives first, teach them to your children first, okay? And then, you know, it's exonerated outside of the household, right? Verse 7 again. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them okay, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, when thou sittest in thy house, okay, so we just sitting down, chilling, watching TV or whatever, or having a little dinner, you know what I'm saying, talk about the commandments, man, or relate what's going on today in the world to the statutes and the commandments of the Most High, right, and the laws, and shall teach them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, so if you're taking a little walk through your neighborhood or whatever, or if you're taking a little drive with your family, you know what I'm saying? Or, or even your, your your homies or whatever, man. If they're, you know, just like I said, if they have an ear to hear and a mind to understand, you can teach that to them too, man. If they don't know anything about the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, right? And when thou walkest by the way, 
and when thou liest down and when thou risest up, okay, so before you even go to bed at night, man, you know, you should have your mind fixated on the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, even when you're waking up, all right, just as Paul says in the New Testament, you know, pray without ceasing, you know, stay diligently in these laws, man, as it says in the book of Joshua, the first chapter, right, so this is what we're supposed to be doing, man, and teaching them to our families, when they lies down and when they rise up in the morning, right? Verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as fretlets between thy eyes, okay? So like I was saying before, man, always keep your mind fixated on the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. As a matter of fact, always keep the Most High on your mind, man. And his son, Hamashiach, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. And I'm going to start at verse seven. And it reads as follows. The Most High did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Okay, so... That just goes to show that this is talking about us, man. You know, who's known as the minorities of the world? I mean, just look up the definition of minority, right? And that'll show you exactly what that's talking about. Verse 8. But because the Most High loved you, all right, children of Israel and the descendants of the children of Israel, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negroid descent, but because the Most High loved you, and because he would keep the oath, okay, which he had sworn unto your fathers or your forefathers, have the Most High brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, okay, which is basically today known as your, your oppressors, your slavers, okay, from the land of the Pharaoh king of Egypt, all right, so... In this sense right here, you could just look at the Pharaoh being as the ruler, okay, or a queen or something, or, you know, an ambassador to a country, or even a president, right, a potus. Okay, so that's all that is, right? Pharaoh king of Egypt, and then when you look up the definition of Egypt, it's synonymous with bondage, okay? And then, of course, if you want to take a step further, bondage is slavery and oppression, all right? Verse 9. Know therefore that the Most High, thy God, which is your God, your power, he is God, okay? He is the Most High power. The faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and what keep his commandments to a thousand generations, all right? So this is what we're supposed to be doing, man. So despite what's going on, always keep the statutes and commandments of the Most High and keep your mind fixated on them, right? Let's go to the book of Sirach, which is the book of Apocrypha. Salakia, the book of Ecclesiasticus, and the book of Apocrypha. Okay? Chapter 2. Alright, so here we go. We're in the book of Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus, and the book of Apocrypha, chapter 2, starting from verse 1, and it reads, My son... If thou come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation, which is prepare your body for temptation, right? Prepare your spirit for temptation. Verse 2. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. So we got to endure what's going on today, man. No matter what we see on the news nightly, you know, all of the killings, you know, all of the robberies, all of the people losing their homes, losing their apartments, right? Being evicted, you know, being foreclosed, okay? carjackings, all of that stuff, man. But what this says right here, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. All right. So as I said, you know, this is like the title to this video, you know, fear not, keep your faith in the most high. All right. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Verse four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. So this is what's going on now, man, with our people. 
we're being changed to a lower state, right? We're being forced to do things that we don't want to do, that we wouldn't normally do, just to keep a job or to keep a roof over our heads or food on our table, right? But what the Most High said again, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state, verse 5, for gold, okay? So this is what the Most High think of us, man. He think of us as gold, okay? Which is a most precious item besides diamond, right? For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, all right? So if you considered as an acceptable man in the eyes of the Most High, then you're gonna be tried in the furnace of adversity, man, right? He's gonna prove you, all right? But what you're supposed to do, verse six, believe in him and he will help thee order thy way all right and trust in him all right so basically he's telling you no matter what's going on around you man keep your minds fixated on keeping my law statutes and commandments okay keep your faith in me and i'm going to redeem you i'm going to save you out of your calamities right verse six again from the top believe in him and he will be order thy way all right and trust in him verse seven Ye that fear the Most High, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. Okay, so when you start to go aside from the Most High, when you start dipping and dabbing into other things and, and having faith in other false gods, man, having faith in Allah, all right, Salaki, like having uh, um, faith in Allah, the false god of Islam, okay, having faith in Krishna and Shivna, the false gods of Hinduism, okay, having faith in Buddha, the false god of Taoism, all right, with the, the Chinese, okay? Cesare Borgier and religious Christianity or church Andy, I should say, all right? All of these false gods and these sororities and fraternities and these secret societies, okay? So this is why the Most High says this again in verse 7. Ye that fear the Most High, wait for his mercy, okay? Not Allah mercy, not Buddha mercy, okay? Not Krishna and Shiva mercy, not the Virgin Mary and Roman Catholicism mercy, okay? Not your false idol gods in Hinduism and, and um, paganism, okay? Jainism, all of these false multiple gods. Not your, your ancestors in spirituality, okay? Which is necromancy, by the way. But the Most High said again, man, verse six. Ye that fear the Most High wait for his mercy, and go not aside, okay? Don't go to those other false religions and gods, man. All right? Like a lot of our people are trapped in today. Religious church and Islam, okay? That's not our gods, man. As it says here again, lest ye fall, all right? Verse eight, ye that fear the most high believe him and your reward shall not fail, all right? Verse nine, ye that fear the most high hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy, verse 10. Look at the generations of old, okay? So this is the Most High saying, look at the generations of old, man. Look at our ancestors, the one who kept faith in the Most High, right? Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Most High and was confounded, all right? So he's letting you know, had faith and trust in me, the one and only true God, which is the God of the Bible, all right, which is the, the God of Israel, which is the 12 tribes, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, Seminole Indians of Negro descent. All right, all of the people from that lineage of people, this is what the Most High said, man, verse 10 again from the top. Look at the generations of old and see, did any ever trust in the Most High and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? All right, so this is the Most High letting you know, man, who have I ever forsaken? that had their mind fixated on me and keep my law, statutes, and commandments and believe in my, my son, the one and only true Hamashiach, right? Verse 10 again from the top. Look at the generations of old, look at your ancestors, man, and see, did any trust in the Most High and was confounded or did any abide in his fear, which is the Most High, and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him, all right? So if you truly serve in the Most High, believing in the Most High and His Son Hamashiach, and keeping His law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability, He's not going to despise you, man. Right? Verse 11. For the Most High is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins. All right? 
and save it in time of affliction, okay, which is nowadays what's going on with a majority of our people, man. They're going through a lot of afflictions, man. You know, a lot of people falling sick, a lot of people dying, dying in their sleep, dying on the way to work, dying on the way home from work, getting robbed on the way home from work, coming home and seeing a foreclosure sign on their door to their home, seeing an eviction notice on their door to their apartment, their refrigerators is empty, right? So this is what's going on, man. This is the affliction that's going on today, man. But what the Most High said again, verse 11, for the Most High is full of compassion, mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins, all right? That's only if you come back to serve him, right? Not if you're serving Allah, Buddha, Krishna, Shiva, Virgin Mary, and all of these false gods, man, okay? Which is in Jainism and Hinduism, all right? Being a polytheist, worshiping all of these multiple gods, man, all right? But what it says in the book of Deuteronomy, hear, O Israel, okay, which is you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, man, the Lord God, our God, is one, okay? It ain't no multiple gods, man. Verse 11, for the Most High is full of compassion, mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgive of sins, and save of in time of affliction. Verse 12, woe, which is destruction, when you look that up in definition, right? To the fearful hearts, okay? So we are here fearing of losing your job, losing your money, losing your bank account, losing that bag, right? Because you won't comply with the mandates that's going on, right? But what the Most High says here again in verse 12, woe, okay, destruction, all right? Woe be to the fearful hearts, which is the fearful minds, and the faithful hands, and the sinner, okay, that goes both ways, or two ways as it's written here, right? Verse 13, Woe unto him that is faint-hearted. Okay, so keep your faith in the Most High, man. All right? You know, don't be bending and bowing down to all of these crazy mandates that's going on, man, just because you fear that you're going to lose your car. All right? Your car is going to get repoed. Your house is going to get foreclosed. Your apartment is going to get evicted. Right? Woe to the faithful hearts, man, as it says here. Woe unto them that is faint-hearted. For he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended, all right? So the Most High is saying he's not going to defend you, man. If you don't keep your faith in me, I'm not going to defend you because you don't have your faith in me, all right? You believe in Allah. You believe in uh, E, all right? Your oppressors, all right? Your, your, your slavers to your ancestors, all right? You trust in oppression, okay? So this is what the Most High is saying, man. You don't have your faith in me. You're believing in Caesarea Borgia, Virgin Mary and Roman Catholicism, okay? Your ancestors, which is already dead, which is necromancy. You're not even supposed to be calling on your ancestors, man. Your ancestors don't even know who you are, right? So this is the, 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 the foolishness and the folly and the silliness that our people are in nowadays, man. This is why we're going through these calamities that we're going through now, right? Verse 13 again. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. All right. Let's go to the book of Psalm, chapter 62. All right, there will be one minute here, brothers and sisters. Let me fix this mic. Psalm chapter 62 and it reads truly my soul waiteth upon the most high power from him cometh my salvation all right not from Allah not from Virgin Mary not from Buddha Krishna or Shiva or Lucifer himself in these secret societies right but what this says again verse 1 in the book of Psalm 62 Truly, my soul waiteth upon the Most High. From him come my salvation, verse 2. He only, okay, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved, verse 3. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain 
all of you, all right? So who this is talking about, man? You can get an idea from this, right? How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall. Shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency, all right? Which is speaking of the Most High. So this is who they're trying to be, man. They're trying to be as the Most High. They're exalting themselves as the Most High, all right? Trusting in their science, all right? When you hear them on the news, they don't even speak of the Most High, all right? Everything that come out of their mouths is science, science, trust in science, trust in the evolution, all right? According to the biblical scriptures, there's no such thing as evolution, all right? But as it says here again, they only to consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies, okay? They're delighting in their own lies, man. All right, telling you, oh, it's safe and effective, all right? But you see people dropping like flies all over the place, all right? But they're not going to show it on the nightly news, man. You got to actually diligently search these things out across the internet, right? 